In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of taking an object that was textured in Substance Painter and rendering that in Substance Stager. So you can see that I have this robot character. The model was created in Medium by my coworker, Giovanni Neckpill. And so now all the textures are completed and I'm ready to go into the rendering process. So all I need to do is come up here to File and choose Send to Substance 3D Stager. So we're now going through an exporting process. Here you can see that Substance Stager is now loading in the model that was exported. All of the textures that were exported from Substance Painter are gonna be hooked up into Stager materials and everything's gonna be applied and ready to go for me to start staging and rendering the scene. Okay, so just like that, you can see that we have our robot here in my 3D view. And like I said, all of the materials are applied. Okay, so let's start creating a little environment for this robot character. So I'm gonna import in a 3D model that I'm gonna use for a ground plane. I have a terrain that was modeled by another coworker named Vladimir Petkovich. Vlad modeled this terrain in ZBrush and I was able to export in the OBJ, just simply drag and drop it right here into the stager viewport to import the model. Here in the scene view, you can see that I have the object. Now it was called group one. Let's just make sure we just name this something that's a little bit more recognizable, so I'll call it ground. Now you'll also notice here that some of my ground is being cut off and that's because if I come over to the environment tab and I take a look at the ground properties, this ground plane is enabled. That's typically used as like a shadow catcher. I'm not really going to be using that here in this case, so I'm just going to disable it. Now I see the entire model. Okay, so with this in place, let's go ahead and go back here to the art robot and let's position this art robot here in the scene or more specifically on the ground plane. So I can use the move tool to position. However, I can also just simply click and drag here on the pivot point and you can see this pivot point will actually snap the robot along the surface normal here of the ground plane geometry, which is really cool, nice way to position objects. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with something maybe like this. I can always tweak this after the fact, but here, I think we'll do something like this. And what I'm looking at is possibly doing a shot where I frame up my object, where we have some nice terrain here in the foreground and in the background, and right here in the midground is where I'm actually gonna do the main focus here for my character. All right, the next thing I'd like to do is start to get some texturing here on this ground plane. And so I'm just gonna use a substance material for that. So here you can see that I'm browsing the Substance 3D Assets website, and I found a nice substance material that's gonna work perfect for this ground terrain. And I can download this SBS AR material. So now that I've already done that, I can simply take that substance material and then just drag and drop it here onto the ground plane. So here you can see that I'm dragging in the substance material and I'll just drop it right here on the ground plane. And that is going to apply this material to the terrain mesh. Now here under the ground object in the material tab, you can see that I have all of the parameters that are accessible through the substance material to make changes. In my case here, I definitely wanna change this resolution. So I'm gonna upgrade this here to 2048. And then I'm also gonna go through and just repeat this material on the surface. So for the repeat value, I think I'll set this to say something like a six by six on the X and Y repeat. All right, so I think this is gonna work for me for now. Next thing I'll do is start to take a look at maybe setting up my camera as well as the all important lighting here for my scene. So at the top of the toolbar, I'm gonna click this create camera button, which is going to create a new camera. By default, it's set to 1920 by 1080. I can always change this output size, but this is gonna be the resolution I actually wanna work with. The camera framing that I wanna use is, is something more in line of what you see here. Of course, I could change my focal length if I want, but I think what I have at this 50 millimeters is gonna work well enough. Okay, so now let's start to take a look at the overall lighting. So what I can do to begin with is just come over to the top of the toolbar and enable my ray tracing. So already we're starting to get some nice shadowing here from enabling my ray tracing. If I look at the options, you'll notice that I'm rendering here with my GPU. So now I just need to adjust the environment lighting. If I come over here to the scene hierarchy and choose environment underneath the lights category, here you can see I can adjust the global lighting, which is a high dynamic range image. I can adjust things like intensity and rotation. By holding down shift and using my right mouse button left to right, I can interactively adjust the rotation here of this light. Very similar to how it would work in Substance Painter. I definitely do not wanna use this studio interior. So I'm gonna come over here to the starter assets and I'm gonna select the light option and then scroll down here towards the bottom and you can see a range of HDR images that we ship in Substance Stager. You can also import your own if you like. But in my case here, I think I'm gonna go with this Corsica Beach. I'll just left click 
and you can see here it's applied this new environment light. Now I'll hold down shift, right mouse button, left to right again to adjust this new light angle for that HDR. So we'll try something like this for now. Okay, so one of the issues that I'm having here with my ground plane is, well, I don't have any displacement. This looks very flat and boring. So let's take care of that now. I'm going to select the ground itself, the ground mesh. And underneath the object, you'll notice here that we have this displacement setting. So now I'm going to enable the displacement option. And Stager is now going to go through the process of tessellating the geometry based on the tessellation mode. So in my case here, it's set to per triangle fixed by default, but I might actually set this to just an overall total face budget and I'll leave it at 10,000 for now. It's really nice that you can set the specific face budget number that you want. Okay, we're not really seeing too much happen here and that's because I need to adjust my material settings. So again, I have my ground selected. I'm gonna jump over to my material tab and then scroll down to where I have the height information. So we'll expand the height value and I have this height scale. I can really punch this. So what I'm gonna do here is set this to a value of six. Okay, so now we're starting to see some nice displacement here. Again, holding down the shift key and my right mouse button, as I start to adjust my lighting, we can see how we're starting to get some just different results here. And that's actually looking pretty cool. Now, of course, at any time, I can always jump back over here to the object and increase this face budget so that I can get a much higher quality result on the overall displacement here for my scene. But for now, this is gonna be fine because I'm still just kind of working up what I want this scene to basically look like. All right, so something else I could do is maybe take a look at uh, maybe doing a little bit of a sky replacement here. So the background plate for the camera is just this gray background. If I select the camera, I can come over here to, let's say the background and add an image here. Well, I have a sky image that I'd like to use. So let me just come over here to my second monitor and just grab it and I'll just drag and drop it right here to this background input. So I'll grab the image, it's a PNG file and just place it right here on the background. So now I have this sky in place. Okay, so something else I'd like to do, it's a little dark here, so maybe I would like to add a little bit of an accent light. So here, I'm just click my drop down and go back to my viewport camera. So you'll notice here that I'm able to look at my view, uh, that displacement on the terrain's looking pretty cool, and we're also able to work with that interactively here in our ray tracer. So what I'm gonna do is now, underneath the starter assets, I'm still under the lights category. Let's scroll up here towards the top and take a look at these physical lights. So I have some physical lights that I can drag into the scene, maybe a spotlight or a directional light. I think I'll try to maybe use this area light. And so what I'm gonna do is just left click and drag the area light. And you can see that I can actually have the light point directly to a specific face normal here on my robot. So if I'm looking to maybe add a little bit of a highlight here to the side of the robot, I'm just gonna align the light here to this side of the robot's face. That area light is now pointing directly at that face normal. Okay, with that in place, I'll now move the light out slightly and just make some adjustments. So I'll go through and rotate this guy. Maybe what I could do is come over here to say something like the exposure and I'll just increase this a bit. Now, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at what this is doing through our camera view. So we'll jump over to our camera view. And like I said, I can also maneuver or manipulate this light and get something more in line of what I wanna do. I was really just looking at getting a nice little rim lighting going on here. So like I said, that's what I'm truly trying to focus on. So let's get something like this. I'm just gonna play with this slightly here to get this in place. If the exposure value, if, if I set that too high, I can always kind of feather that back by just decreasing the overall intensity. So you can see what that's doing here. Something else that might be kind of interesting is just to play around with the color value. So if we come over here to the color and we take a look at our temperature, we can use a, a warm kind of tinted value or maybe something a little bit more cool. Actually, I think I'm gonna just move this over here to this kind of warm value. And we'll go with something like maybe like this. Okay, so with that in place, what I can do is also hold down the shift, right mouse button left to right, again, to kind of continue to play around with the lighting here for that environment background. So I'm just rotating that HDR in the background, which is also changing some of that directional light from that scene as well. We can also jump over to the environment itself underneath lights, and I can increase or decrease the intensity here as well. Okay, so now that we have this in place, I'm kind of liking this little bit of contrast where I have some shadowing here. I have this uh, area light providing some light, and then again, a little bit more shadows. So we get this nice little contrast, kind of helping to maybe focus a little bit on my robot character. I can also jump over to my camera and enable depth of field. 
and I can set a focus point. So if we focus right on the robot, we can adjust our blur amount. This lets us have some nice kind of depth of field, again, to help focus our eye to our robot character. Well, one problem with this, though, is you'll notice that because that background plate that we have added to our camera is just a 2D image, that depth of field is not really able to appropriately affect that background plate. All right, so for now, what I'm going to do is just disable this depth of field. And I'm going to go ahead and just save my scene. So now I'd like to go ahead and render my scene. Before I do that, I'm going to jump over here to my ground and increase my face budget here for the actual tessellation. So now I'm just going through and just trying some different values. I ended up using 7 million, which is a lot, but Stager can handle this pretty well. Okay, so now that I've increased that polygon budget here for the tessellation, I'm going to jump over here to my render tab. I'm going to save my scene, and I'm going to crank out a render. So you'll notice here from the export settings, I have the camera. This is the shot camera that I want to work with. You can have multiple cameras and you can queue them up here. In my case, I'm just going to be rendering with this one camera. So it's set to 1920, 1080. And I'm going to export as a PSD file. And I'm specifically using this PSD file format because Stager is going to export with some additional layer passes such as depth, material, and object selection, which I can use to create various post effects inside an image editing application. So I'm going to set this to PSD. You can see that we have a 16-bit or a 32-bit per channel option. I'm going to leave this at 16-bit and then simply click the render button here to perform a render. So now that the render is complete, I can come over here to the render status and click this button here to show in folder or edit in Photoshop. So now I'm going to run through the process of editing my render to add some various post effects. I'll run through this process pretty quickly, and you can use any image editing application that you prefer. In my case here, I'm just going to use Photoshop. So I'll click the Edit in Photoshop button, and you can see this is going to open Photoshop. Stager is going to create a few additional layers, as I had mentioned previously, that we can use in this post effects process. So for example, if I come over here to the additional layers, you can see that we have a layer for material selection masks. We have another layer for object selection, and then finally, we have a depth pass. Here you can see that we have our rendered image, which has been denoised. Stager does a denoising pass, which removes all the noise from the render. This is what the original render looks like, quite noisy. However, this pass, which is denoised, is going to give us a nice clean result. So with this layer visible, you'll notice that we have our background transparency back, which is great because I can do a sky replacement here. So I'm just going to grab the sky that I used in Stager and just drag and drop it here to the canvas. And then I'm just going to drag that here below the rendered image. So now I have my sky back. This is going to let me do a little bit of transformation. So I'll use the transformation tool. And then I'm going to perform a non-uniform scale to basically better represent the curvature of the sky. So I think I want to go with something more like this. All right, so now that I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and just merge visible these two layers. Now on this layer, I'm going to come up here to filter, and I'm just going to use my camera raw to add a few effects. Now, typically, I would convert this to a smart object so that I could add multiple effects, keep things non-destructive. But here, in, just, in this case, for this demonstration, I'm just going to just add the filter directly and just kind of bake this in. So if I go to the basic tab, I can play with things like the exposure. So I'm just going to bring the exposure up slightly, play around with things like the contrast. Uh, here for clarity, I'm going to increase this value. And then if I come over here to my effects, I can add in some vignetting here. So we'll add a little bit of vignetting and then click OK. So that gives us a slight bit of grading here to the image, already a little bit better with the contrast. Now I can start to use this depth pass. So I'm going to come over here to the additional layers and take a look at this. So I have a problem here where the background is black. I have some missing data. This is just that camera background that I used for the sky. So it had transparency. There wasn't actual like full 3D scene that I could use here for that depth. So no problem, I can just fix this. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to create a new layer, and I'll just fill this with white. Uh, let's just drag this below the depth. Let's come over here to the depth layer, and I'm going to grab just the wand tool here and just quickly select the black and delete it. And there we go. So now we have basically the full range. And then I'll merge these two layers down, and we'll call this depth. All right, so this is going to be our depth pass. I'm going to use this a couple ways. Uh, number one, let's add some fog. So what we're going to do here is come over here to the layer stack, and I'm going to add a new layer, and we'll just call this fog. And I'm going to just sample maybe a value range here from the cloud in the background. So let's just say something like that works. 
and then we'll just fill that layer. So now I'm going to add a layer mask to that layer, and I'm going to fill this layer mask with my depth information. So we'll come up here to the depth, control A to select the layer and copy it. Then I'll come over here to the layer mask, alt left click to enter into the layer mask, and then paste in the depth information. Now when I jump back to my layer, I can see that I now have this fog pass working for me. So easily now I can come over here to the layer mask itself and just run like a levels to adjust the actual fog. Okay, I think something like that's gonna work pretty well and we'll click okay. And you can see that that really adds a lot to the image. If we turn off the fog, this is what we had before. And now we have some nice atmospheric perspective. So next, I'd like to add some depth of field. So I can take this rendered image and I'm just gonna duplicate this layer for now. And what I'm gonna do is just create a layer mask on this. And then I also want to use that depth information. So I'll select the depth layer, control A to, cop to select it all, control C to copy it. Let's jump back here into the layer mask and paste it in. Okay, so we'll come back to the layer. Now what I'm gonna do is just right click on this layer mask and just disable the layer mask. The reason I'm using this layer mask is because I'm gonna come over here to filter and choose blur and use lens blur. Now the lens blur is going to look here at the layer mask as the source. Now what I can do is come over here to set my focal point and I'll select the robot. And now as I adjust the radius, you can see here that I can add my depth of field as a post effect, which is driven by the depth layer that I rendered out of stager. Now we'll just click OK to apply this depth of field effect. Now I'm feeling like the fog is just a little bit too intense. It's no problem. I can just select the layer and just simply feather this back here by dropping the opacity. So I'm just going to give it a slight hint of some atmospheric perspective. As you can see, it's pretty quick to send assets from painter to stager and build a simple scene for rendering. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at stager. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.